Hello everyone. You must be finding it strange. I'm not at work. Uh, today, Greg Gregory, one of my baristas, is going to start uh, the cafe for me, so I don't have to go that early. So I have arrived at my uncle's place, and uh, currently my quick meal Rubino has been sent to my cafe for demonstration. So I'll be using the vintage quick meal. Uh, surprisingly fast. It's a single thermal block machine. Um, it's very interesting to use. Uh, so today I'm not going to do anything fancy. I'm not going to do any W, uh, uh, what, uh, blind shaker or whatever. So basically I'm just going to introduce you to this machine. It's uh, manufactured in, I believe it's in the 19... Uh, if I'm not wrong, it should be around my uh, should be around 1970s, right? This machine, right? Okay, so I'm gonna try to turn this towards the camera so you can get a better look. Right, this is the machine. It's pretty small. You can see that uh, my DF64 is taller than this machine. It's a very cute vintage machine, um, cuboid, right? There's a carb warming tray right at the top. Right, this is a carb warming tray. And inside the carb warming tray, have you seen a glass water tank before? I should bring the mic closer so you can hear the sound. Can you hear that? This is a very heavy piece of glass. You can see all the tube is turning yellow. Everything is original. Right, so it says super quick espresso. Right, so supposed to give you super quick espresso, right? So today we're going to make espresso using this machine. So should be quite interesting, right? So I'll take it slow today. So I'm free to have any uh, chit chatting or whatever you, you want to talk about, right? So it's more of an easy flow. So I'm going to switch on the uh, switch on the machine. But right? you can see that maybe I just give you a more of a, what is this machine about, right? So this machine, uh, as I've demonstrated in uh, one of my earlier video, right, it's a single thermal block machine, right. Um, it has a drip tray, right. The drip tray is pretty small. Right, you can see the drip tray is pretty small. You can see how shallow the drip tray is. You can see there's still some coffee stain on top. Right, you can see that's all. That's all for the drip tray. Right, it's a very very shallow one, but we do realize that. This may not be enough. So you can see they have a drain hole outside. And the drain hole you can connect to a pipe. And you can see there's a there's a rubber, there's a plastic. Um, I would say this is a L band, right? L shaped band here, which allows you to drain the water here. And then your tube here will drain the water out. And basically, um, you can don't use this plastic um, tray, right? Just put your stainless steel cover on top, and then it becomes a plum out, right? So, <laughs> how fantastic is that, right? So, and it's a very heavy machine, right? It's a very, very heavy machine, right? You can see with one hand, I can barely lift it up because of the glass. The glass inside is super heavy, right? And to the side, Right, should just share with you on the side. Right, uh, here, I hope you can read that. Right, you can say Automatica. Right, so uh, this is uh, fully Italian because I purchased this from Italy. Uh, I saw it somewhere, somebody is selling this and I seized the chance to buy it and ship over to Singapore. Luckily, the voltage from Italy compared to Italy and Singapore, they are roughly the same. 
so I can use it directly. I bought another machine, but the machine is not good. Uh, the scale built up inside is so bad that it just fry my rotary pump, right? So that machine is actually higher spec than this one. It comes with a rotary pump, but currently it's broken. Uh, the pump has, is fried because it can't drive enough water through and the motor just fry. All right, so you can see here, right, it's able to heat up, right? And then this is the second button here. When you turn in the clockwise direction to the three o'clock position, this is actually to make espresso, right? And if you turn it anti-clockwise, you're getting it ready for steaming temperature. And then to activate the steam, you go to the nine o'clock position, right? And this is a special knob here, right? This special knob allows you to increase or decrease the flow. Right? So this is something that um, you, you, you there's, no, there's no pressure gauge on this machine. So everything is done by feeling, uh, by how you feel towards it. It may not make the best espresso, right? But it's a, it's a fun machine to use. And uh, maybe not for everyday use, but uh, I'm going to show you how it works in a short while, right? Okay, so I'm going to turn on the machine. Oh, right now, right, um, um, and the machine also comes with two portal filter. Okay, have you seen a portal filter that's like that before? Right, this is not a portal filter, not really a portal filter, right? It is a, oh, you can see there are some coffee inside, right? I'm going to wash this. This is actually the steam. Right, so the steam tip is attached to the polar filter, right? For your for you to steam your milk, right? So you can see it has no steam wand, right? But they use a polar filter using the thermal block to generate enough heat to heat up the water to steaming temperature and the steam that comes out from here, right? It's not exactly very dry steam, right? But it, it is good enough for one cup or two cup of cappuccino, right? May not froth to the silkiest coffee. Uh, sorry, silkiest milk, but you'll see how powerful the steam is later on. Okay, and this is the portal filter, right? So this is the actual portal filter, right? And this is the old style portal filter whereby the filter basket is not uh, locking, it's not locking tightly onto the portal filter, which means it will drop out. So this makes uh, the preparation of puck slightly different, right? Because we are so used to able to knock out puck this way but now you can't because this is not there's no wire inside to hold on to your filter basket i believe this basket is around um 16 to 17 gram right but you can see that this is a straight ridgeless basket right and not a standard e61 right you can see the design is slightly different right right so basically uh, let's hit up the machine let first check whether there's enough water. Yes, there is. Right, so let's heat up the machine. You can see how fast the machine heat up. Right, the moment you switch on, I right, can see that this red indicator, indicator light is on. And um, once the machine is heat up to the right, to the blue ready temperature, it will switch off this light so that it knows that you are ready. Right, currently I have to attach my drip tray, right? Because I didn't have the rubber hose. Okay, so while waiting for the machine to heat up, let's make grind some coffee beans, right? And today I'm going to use my uh, Gen um, DF64 Gen 1, right? This is actually, uh, I've repaired the uh, electronic board inside once, um, probably three months ago, right? I've been using this grinder for, uh, I would say around three years, right? So it has served me well uh, um, right now. Um, the burst inside is actually the uh, SSP high uniformity. Let me get some wet cloth and I'll be right back.
and I have also modified the uh, declumper that's inside so it no longer has the silicon thick silicon layer of declumper from gen 1 all the way to gen 3 I think from gen 4 onwards they switched to the dual thick plastic layer of declumper which is another um, not a very good okay you can see that the light is switched off which means the machine is ready so I will just do a quick heat up of my polyfilter Right, turn. And we have hot water. Right, so you can see there's still some coffee ground from the previous one. I didn't clean it properly. Right, I should have flushed it. Okay, let's just clean out, clean out the coffee ground. I would say the filter basket is pretty well made, even though this is 1970s. Oh, it's very hot. You can see the filter basket. This is stock from 1970s, right? You can see the condition. The previous owner has kept it so well. I can't believe this is almost like 40 to 50 years old. Yeah. I love these vintage machines. Um, okay, so let's grind some coffee. And the coffee that we are going to make today is our number five blend, uh, which is called the Coca Petal Symphony. Right, um, it has a um, very dark chocolatey undertone, but then at the same time, it has some sweetness to highlight uh, at the front. Right, so when you drink the espresso, it's going to give you some sweetness. But then uh, what lies underneath becomes more chocolatey. Ah, smells really good. Okay, so basically the way I'm going to do at home is you can see I have no water scale whatsoever. Uh, I usually just those direct to my basket. Right, and make sure that uh, it's enough okay then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour in right and then I'm going to grind the beans is pretty fresh so I didn't want to grind too fine currently I'm probably grinding at 10 let's give it a try Morning everyone. I saw that there are two of you. Now to reduce the one. Maybe it's too early. Okay, so where to transfer? This is what I'm gonna do. Right, so turn it over. Right. You can see the grind quality from SSP. Uh, not much clumping. Right. Just gonna use my hand to distribute it. Maybe do a little bit of WDT. All right, and I'm gonna use the temper that comes with the machine, right? This plastic temper. It actually works pretty well, I must say. Just that uh, you have to temp it a few times, right? So basically, okay, let me lower the camera a little bit. Basically, you have to move around first, right? Because this um, temper is a lot smaller than the actual basket size. Temp it now, and then I'm going to move slowly to the side. So this is really old school. Hi, Thomas. I haven't seen you for quite some time, you know, Thomas. We should meet up. 
right so this is 10 uh, it has no headroom for part screen uh, and the pillow basket size is slightly smaller slightly smaller than uh, the usual 50 mm so normally my this is a 50 mm um, temper right it just goes in right if i push too hard i will um, my, my temper actually stuck inside right okay today it didn't so this temper it fits this polar filter right but if i'm going to use my other temper right it'll be too big to go in right you can see it doesn't go in this is 58.35 right so this temper is exactly 58 mm size so it does go in nicely and i'm able to turn it right as you can see so okay so this is a good time and uh I can see because this one is a thermal block it's probably too hot now All right so i'm gonna do a quick perch it's a little bit noisy and the tube tray fills up really fast that's why you need the you know you need the hose to actually drain out the water you can see that it's already full so uh, that's why it is not so uh, and water you know overfill i think it's already overfilling just now so the water is coming out from the hole so a direct plumb in will be ideal for this machine right but it's just so fun to use all right let's put it back all right I think I purged a little bit too much of water this morning. Okay, so let's make some espresso, right? Okay, I'm going to use this cup. So I'm basically, I'm just going to make one cup of espresso and um, taste a little bit of the espresso taste. Probably will not be the best. Right, then I'm going to move on to steam the milk and make uh, myself a cup of uh, cappuccino. Right, so let me see, I can zoom in. Okay, this will be perfect, right? So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip the switch on and then I'm going to adjust the uh, potentiometer here which is actually to control the current that flows through the control the current that direct to the pump and then uh, control the, how much water is actually flowing through it that's a pretty good espresso I would say Okay, let's take a look at the espresso 1917 guys 1970s look at the espresso the technology in 1970s still works perfectly all right so right now right um i will be switching this to the steaming mode Right, you're gonna see the uh, coffee puck, which is a very dry puck. There's a center hole, right? Because there's a screw there that hold on to the shower screen. Right. So let's leave it aside. I can use, I can uh, rinse by taking out the filter basket. Right. So now I have to switch on over to the steaming mode. Right. So um, to switch on to the steaming mode, let me clear the coffee powder first. All right. So I want to make sure that my shower screen is clean. Unlike uh, the previous one, you can see that there's some coffee powder that's stuck underneath. So right now I'm going to turn to the uh, anti-clockwise, right? 
So right now it is getting the thermal block up to the steaming temperature. So this is when this device is going to work. Right. Right, it's going to start to heat up. You can see that the steam is already starting to come out from the group head. It's actually evaporating the water that is there just now. So I'm going to lock up the polyfilter the steam polyfilter now. Right, you can see that when you lock up the polyfilter is actually in an angled position so that you can steam your milk, right? All right. Let's get some milk. But before that, I will need to perch to allow the steam water, the condensation water to, to be um, removed first before I start to steam. Otherwise, my milk will be very diluted. I have tried personally, so I know. I need to, there's a little bit of water underneath. Right, so we have to wait a bit because there's a single thermal block doing both the function of making espresso as well as steaming. Um, steaming. Uh, but it should be pretty fast. Uh, that's why it's called super quick, right? Yeah. It's perfect for one cup of espresso and a uh, latte or a cappuccino. Yeah, okay. So you can see that the heating element switch off, which means it's ready to steam. So I will purge some of the water out first. And then you can see that they actually purge the excess water back into the water tank. All right, so I'm going to show you how powerful the steam is. All right, just take a look. All right. Three tip steam hole, right? Three tip. That's why this thing froth like a beast. Right. It's a little bit wet. Right, but it does the job. Okay, let's see how it goes. Okay, for this I will need to stand up. Oh. You can see my hand, it's a little bit wet, it's not uh, dripping with water. Okay, let me try to get you an angle so that you can see as well. Okay, not sure you can see this, but... Uh, okay, let me switch the angle a little bit. Upwards, right? Okay, so let's do it. You do have to wait a little while. Okay, let's clean the, push the milk. You hear the means it's purging the excess water back into the water tank. You can see there are smoke. It's basically water vapor, right? Inside the water tank. Alright, so uh, it's not a standalone steamer, it's a built in steamer. Right. Actually, it's a portal filter attached with a steamer, right? So, this is what makes this machine so interesting. Right, okay, this is definitely a cappuccino form. Right, so today we'll be drinking a cappuccino, right? Okay, sorry about the camera. All right. I'm 
going to transfer, right? Okay, keep the foamy part. Foamy part in the other milk jug. Right. Let's hope I can do something. <laughs> the milk below is too thin. So it's not the best foam, right? So um, so what we do is, uh, you know, there's foam here, right? Right, just put on top. <laughs> okay. That's the best we can make out of this situation. Um, this steamer is not the best, not, not the easiest to use. Uh, and usually it get really foamy on top and uh, a little bit um, less dense below. Right. <laughs> yeah, so uh, basically this is the quick meal, super quick, uh, a machine from the 1970s, right? So um, occasionally if I'm free, I will take out my uh, vintage machine and use them and, uh, and to show you, right? It's pretty interesting machines. Um, so cheers. Okay, the coffee, um, because the milk is a little bit thin, so it's not the usual um, latte or cappuccino that we drink. It's more like our local kopi si, you know? Yeah, like coffee with evaporated milk, but no sugar. Yeah, that's, the, that's how the taste is, right? Hmm. Still a very enjoyable cup of coffee. So um, let's see. We have Stan. Oh, Stan, my 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 old neighbor, right? Yep. So um, very interesting machine. So this is the um, the coffee setup currently that I have at my uncle's place. Uh, let me turn power off this machine. Right, and I usually either do a V sixty or I do a siphon coffee at the back. Right, so this is the if I want if I want black coffee, normally I'll do siphon or I do a you know a, this is like a, a not really a a V sixty. This is more like a mini. What do you call that? I can't remember. Something I forgot the name of the of the brewer. Okay. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. Right. So thank you for joining. Right and. At home, I do have a hand grinder, right? Um, this is the hand grinder that I use, right? Uh, it has been with me for three years plus. Uh, right, it's a very good hand grinder, right? I think uh, quite a number of us have this, right? It's from the St. Anthony industry, right? Um, I like um, the entire build of the grinder uh, is one of the best built grinder I've seen in the market. Whether it's the Easy Presso or Comandante or whatever, right? This grinder is very well made, but only downside it's it's pretty slippery to use, right? Um, because, uh, but we have a solution, right? So very beautiful pearl sets, right? Oh, it's a little bit dirty inside some coffee powder right it's a uh, one of the easiest grinder to disassemble and clean right i think this is a 45 or 46 mm mm sets conical right titanium coated right, you can see this has been used for three years right but not really a lot of usage but uh, it has been used i right, can see how dirty it is i need to clean this right you get a brush Right, but to clean this is really very simple, right? Maybe just to share with you um, the grinder that I love, right? Lock up. Uh, this band, right? I steal it from my son, right? This is band from Ninja Turtle, right? He doesn't use it anymore, and it fits the grinder perfectly, and it helps me grip the grinder better, right? So just unlock all the way.
but they are about i think 90 plus to 100 clicks i think i haven't really count but there's really a lot of clicks but the click at the back is not use, useful anymore because the, the, the coffee is just so coarse right so technically i think they are about 90 clicks you have 90 different coffee adjustment right so the top pin comes out so you can see the hole there is which the the um, indentation the groove there is actually for you to um, make your adjustment by screwing down right they lock it in using this three uh, round balls here right which goes into your here right so that's how you make the uh, locking and we do the bird uh, bird size adjustment i mean the grind size adjustment right uh, and i like the way they make it is because this is aluminum right but the ring here which allow the aluminum catch cup to screw on right is stainless steel so this allows you to screw in really nicely you can hear you can see that when i screw in there's no no sound at all right you can take out a grinder and try try to screw in if it is metal to metal you will usually hear the sound but you can hear don't hear anything right don't hear anything much this is why i love this grinder it's attention to details and the burrows just pop up right and you see the burrows here right so this is titanium coated after using for three years right still pretty good condition still very sharp right and what's left over inside is a spring right and you can actually open up the second chamber to do further cleaning so basically the second chamber screws out right and you take out the inner burr and that's it so simple right and there's no way you can um, fit this back wrongly because everything is so intuitive uh, you can see that alignment there uh, there's a straight edge here straight edge go to the straight edge push in right um, logically will tell you to put the spring in first goes the conical burrs and then the turn knob which allow you to lock up and do the grind size adjustment just go all the way in uh, this thing can do all the way to Turkish grind right all the way right of course you can lock up the this one first you can see when it's aluminum to aluminum to aluminum you can hear the sound right but what's nice is okay let me just lock it up all the way go to zero normally for filter i will do around 55 55 leave it there close it back i have to do some cleaning for this definitely for sure right and then uh, i'm just going to put it back here to the leather cover that comes with the grinder i mean how many of this grinder comes with something like that which is so convenient uh, it's a it's a pleasure to use except that it's a little bit slippery because of the anodized aluminum surface outside and this thing just throw inside your luggage and you're good to go right so I, i'm not promoting this grinder i'm just sharing with everyone right uh, the things i love to use when why i love to use them some has um, vintage uh, some feelings to it because i'm born in the 1970s so i typically love to collect things that is um, the 1970s period or slightly earlier right? i love um, the music in the 70s and 80s right and uh, that's why i i, I like to collect um, grinder that belongs to that era or slightly earlier 1960 to 1970s the best all right so um this is cy thanks for joining right i'll be uh, sipping my coffee and i'll see you um tomorrow Right, see you tomorrow morning back into the cafe.